Laura, uh, great to have you this morning. I wanted to start with this breaking news overnight uh, that uh, it appears, and there you are, you popped up for us. It's so great to see you. Um, the Daily Mail has a very interesting story that's saying uh, that Vladimir Putin essentially may be running out of bullets, that he might have a week and a half, two weeks max. He's losing warplanes, tanks, all the rest of it. He obviously went into this thinking he was going to bulldoze his way through Ukraine. He's obviously caused a lot of destruction. Don't want to minimize the fact there's over two million refugees. But this has not gone as well as Vladimir Putin expected. I don't buy it for a second, Ed, I'll be honest with you. I really think that um, there's so much misinformation. We've never really seen anything like it. I mean, I've been covering wars now for 35 years, and I have never seen people with their nails done in the Ukrainian flag, right? I mean, we're being corralled into this box where we either have to hate Vladimir Putin and believe everything evil that's said about him and love Ukraine, and there's no in between. And that reminds me a lot of you're either, you know, um, a white supremacist or you go with the Democrat narrative on everything under the sun. So um, Vladimir Putin knew exactly what he was doing when he went into Ukraine. The Russian military isn't perfect. They, for example, I've spoken to multiple defense specialists and intelligence specialists from a defense intelligence agency who studied the Russian military for years. They do have a difficulty mounting complex air operations because they do very little um, training hours in comparison to, for example, the United States um, air assets, right, our fighter jet pilots. But Russia um, is not struggling. Uh, what Russia has done from the very beginning has been very strategic. They didn't go straight to Kiev. They went to all those uh, bioweapons laboratories that are scattered all over the country. Some of them they built, so they know where they mm -hmm. are. They've known where they are since the Soviet Union because under the Defense Threat Reduction Program, um, we went in after the fall of the Soviet Union and supposedly turned those facilities in from bioweapons labs into public health labs. Although, um, you know, these days it's hard to believe anything that our leaders tell us because they've lied about COVID, they lied about Russia collusion, they lied about you, the Ukraine impeachment trial. And there's so much mm -hmm. more going on in Ukraine that nobody is talking about. You see such dishonesty when it comes to the history of Ukraine. You see dishonesty when it comes to the Azov Battalion, which is funded by the U.S. and NATO. I mean, you can find pictures of them online holding up the NATO flag and the swastika at the same time. Their own emblem mm -hmm. contains the black sign of the occult, which was a Nazi SS emblem. And it also contains the sideways, you know, uh, lightning insignia of the SS. I mean, this is on throughout the Ukrainian military. You can see that black sign of the occult on their uh, body armor, even on the female soldiers who are paraded in front of the world as being, you know, such an example of Ukraine's um, independence and spirit and nobility. Even they are wearing the black sun of the occult. And, you know, the, we want the White House wants you to believe, well, this doesn't matter. It's just a small number of troops. It's not true. The Azov Battalion has been murdering its way through eastern Ukraine. Yeah. We don't want to admit this. This was why Crimea voted for independence. This is why Crimea talking... wanted to be with Russia. Because sure. we in the media, in the Western media and in the West, won't acknowledge the reality of what's gone on. Western Ukraine backed the Nazis. It was a headquarters for the Nazi SS. The CIA Europe, under Alan Dulles yeah. actually gave immunity from prosecution to the Nazis of Ukraine hmm. from the Nuremberg trials. So um, there is a long history of the United States and our intelligence agencies funding and arming Nazis in Ukraine. These are not like new neo-Nazi groups that sprung up. These are the actual Nazis from the Second World War, who, if you go back to the Nuremberg trials, said that they were planning for a thousand year Reich. And so you have to really wonder as you look at this, when you know that the CIA sponsored the color revolution in Ukraine in 2013 and 14, that they selected Ukraine's leaders, go to the um, go to Victoria Newland's leaked phone conversation where she and the U.S. ambassador are deciding who can lead Ukraine. I mean, there's as much right. interference here as you could possibly imagine before right. you and even Laura. get to Hunter Biden, Nancy Pelosi, John Kerry, mm -hmm. and Mitt Romney, and all of their children who are employed, who earn millions from Ukrainian you are gas pointing, companies. Yeah, you are pointing, pardon me, to a real credibility crisis for our leaders. I don't let Karen Turk jump yeah, in. Yeah, I, I wanted to bring up the fact that President Zelensky is Jewish, and I don't know exactly how this factors in, but there's some very interesting points in what you're saying. And 
looking at this, you know, you could think it's political theatrics. You, you know, made a very good point at the beginning that you think that Putin is con in control. And I actually want to place something that Jen Psaki said, because it seems that the White House is mm. actually echoing that sentiment. Watch this. Well, the end game is really a question for President Putin. We have we have completely crushed his economy. Uh, we have provided military assistance, humanitarian assistance to the Ukrainians, enabling them to fight back for far longer uh, than the Russian leadership uh, anticipated. Uh, and again, he has to uh, he has to determine what the path forward looks for like for him. Thanks, everyone. He's determining you know, what this looks like. And I think that's a lot of what you said, Laura. I'd love to get your thoughts on that, what you just watched. What troubles me about the moment that we're in is that we have such a selective and a narrow reading of history. You know, President Zelensky may be Jewish, but he's not the only one in this who suffered during the Second World War, whose ancestors suffered, right? I mean, look at Putin. How many relatives did he lose in the siege of St. Petersburg? People don't know their history. They don't know what made Vladimir Putin. And I'm not a defend, you know, I'm not defending him. I don't need to defend Vladimir Putin. Putin. My job as a journalist is to try to understand what is the truth here. I don't like being lied to. And we're being mm -hmm. lied to on an epic scale. When we're told your only choice is you have to be 100% with Zelensky, who's a puppet, who you can find on the internet in black stilettos and leather pants, you know, with shirtless, doing a spoof, dancing with the stars kind of entertainment video. That's a mock of a Ukrainian group that does this kind of satanic occult type of uh, music video. And I mean, Zelensky was selected like so many of our leaders. And honestly, with, with big tech and with election fraud these days, we don't know how many leaders all around the world have been yeah. selected for us and weren't actually voted in. But what we do know is that there are increasing problems with technology and the digitization of our world. Because w look at what's happening with COVID. Look at what has happened globally. We are fighting the same battles all over the world. To pretend that this war is about Russia and Ukraine is a just a barefaced lie. Yeah. If Putin has been warning for 15 years that he is not going to stand by while the globalists take over the world, build bioweapons facilities and whatever else they're doing in Ukraine, Ukrainian yeah. oligarchs. Ukraine has been a center of money laundering for you know many of the leaders in this country for how long? Billions of U.S. dollars have been laundered through Ukraine, and we say nothing about it. These are our tax dollars. I mean, before the impeachment trial, had you ever heard of anyone in the United States, I mean, us bringing in foreign governments to the White House for anti-corruption right. training? I mean, does nobody question these things? Why do we not question them? We have an well, idiot uh like Lieutenant Colonel Vindman. Hmm. who goes at the impeachment trial and sits there as a lieutenant colonel. He didn't even make colonel. And he's telling the president of the United States what his policy should be. You have a traitor in the form of Maria Yovanovitch, who was Obama's ambassador, who's telling hmm. Ukrainian government officials, don't listen to the will of the American people. Don't listen to well. the election results. We are the true leaders of America. I mean, and then people object when the woman isn't even fired. She's given a cushy job for life at Georgetown University at the expense of the U.S. taxpayer. And we're told that the president of the United States cannot say to his foreign counterparts, you know, that we want yeah. you to look into something. But Joe Biden he can it. withhold as much aid as he wants to. I mean, right. there's so much hypocrisy and dishonesty here. And Ukraine is well, at the center of it all. Go back to Russia collusion. Go to Alexandra Chalupa. Go to Eric Caramella. The, the whistleblower who went to work for Adam Schiff, who wasn't really a whistleblower, right. and all those corrupt people in the deep state. And you know what? The deep state isn't a theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's an actual deep state. Look up the SES, the Senior Executive Service, because when that bureaucracy was ushered into law in the United States right. of America, that's when we got a bunch of unelected bureaucrats well, pulling the strings behind the scenes. And these are Laura, the people that keep lying to us. Absolutely. And pardon me, I, we've got a, a live a chat where we're streaming on Getter, for example, and I'm watching it as you're talking. People are talking about how you're dropping truth bombs and you're a real journalist. And I know that having worked alongside you for many, many years when you're at CBS and many other places. And maybe they didn't want to hear the truth, but you're dropping those truth bombs now. Unfortunately, we've got to hit a break right now. We'd love to have you back in the days ahead. We love having you on. Laura Logan, thanks for joining us on Real America's Voice. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we'll certainly have her back. <laughs> 